What's up everybody? Today I have a video for everyone who is interested in podcasting and more specifically the new PodTrack P4. This is a podcast recorder with four XLR inputs as well as phone and audio interface capabilities and much more. In this video I'm going to give you a bit of a walkthrough of this device as well as its capabilities, its technical specifications, as well as my highlights, as well as some of the lowlights of this device. At the end I'm going to conclude everything with my opinion on this device and for starters I think it is actually a pretty incredible device and it is kind of marvelous how much is fit into this small tech device. Now, to start out, a little bit of a disclaimer. This device was provided to me by Sound Services GmbH in Germany, and they were really kind enough to send this out for me to review, and I'm going to return this as soon as I'm going to be done with making these videos. Another thing before we jump into the video, in the description of this video you will actually find multiple links that might be interesting for you. Of course we have the product links of the P4 as well as some other products like my microphones and other audio recorders, but you will also find a playlist specifically with videos about the PodTrack P4 made by me. Multiple comparisons are going to be released over the next few days as well as some deep dives on specific feature sets. Now let's start by having a look at this device and for starters talking about the technical specifications. Now this device obviously is made for podcasters based on the name PodTrack P4. So this is geared toward people that are recording voice and also having for example remote guests in form of a call or something similar. So that's what this is really geared toward and I think that it does this job very, very well. And with that let's jump into the body of this device and there we will find the key feature which is the 4 port XLR input at the top right here and of course you have volume control for each of these ports with this little gain knob right there. Each of these ports is also phantom power capable so that you can switch into these modes and port 3 and 4 are also used for the phone or the audio interface integration. All of these ports can also be muted during recording and the key thing here is that these mute switches are not producing any click. They are having a hardware click so if you press these buttons there is a audible click, however, inside of the recording, except for maybe your podcast mic picking up that button press, inside of the recording there is barely anything noticeable. It's almost as if it's just switching to a gain of zero without an actual click. These XLR ports here at the top have a possible gain of up to 70 decibels and with that you can power many consumer microphones. Even something like the pod mic for example would probably work right here. Definitely works for my Shure Beta 57A, those sound really good on these interfaces. All four tracks are always recorded individually into their own WAV files. Additionally, you also have this sound pad which is also going to be recorded into its own file. Lastly, you also have a complete mix down of everything that is going on on the device mixed down into a stereo mix file. The format that this recorder records into is a WAV file which has 16 bits and 44.1 kHz. This is probably one of the limitations of the PodTrack P4. It does not feature for example 48.0 kHz and 24 bit, it just has these 16 bit 44.1 kHz. That is actually one of my main concerns with this device, however specifically for voice recording this can be actually enough also if you don't do that much post processing because that's where you would want to have those additional bits in information. This recorder has a full size SD card port right here on the side and it supports SD cards up to 512 gigabytes. However, the recorder also displays the remaining record time on the screen so that you always know how much record time you still have left on the card. One thing to note in terms of its remaining space, these mute switches here don't disable the individual tracks, they just set them to a gain of zero so that they are not audible. 
However, if you unmute at any point during the recording, this track will just be recorded as usual. And you will always have all four files and the soundpad file ready to go with these individual tracks. And of course, also the stereo mixdown. Since this is a podcast recorder and also features these remote integrations, this is also a recorder that features a hub for your headphones. So there are four ports, which are mini jack stereo headphone jacks right here at the bottom of the device. And each of these headphone ports actually has its own volume gain control. This is actually really cool because for example, one person might have better ears than the other. And that way this can actually be controlled individually for each person. This is not something that has a mix down. So everybody will always hear everybody else, including themselves and of course, all the other things going on like the sound pads and so on. Then we also have these sound pads right here and there will be a individual video about this linked in the description or the playlist below. This is specifically useful if you want for example to include your intro and outro right then and there or for example like something that I like very much is including a listener question. There are different playback modes for these. You can assign your custom files there and you also have the ability to choose between 11 inbuilt tracks and those are actually there and you can assign them and this will read the SD card for files that you have on there and you also have things like applause, cash register, dream as well as funky, hand riff, horn, jazz, laughter as well as a sad trombone and those kind of things. So this can be a fun way to integrate sound effects or as I mentioned intros, outros or maybe even listener questions. This device has two ways to power it. It for one has the batteries in the back. These are two AA batteries. And with those and without using phantom power, you're able to get about four hours worth of record time. However, even better, you also have the ability to power it, for example, with this kind of a USB power brick on USB-C right here on the side. And as you can see, there are actually two ways you can power this. You have one DC 5 volts USB-C port, and then there's another USB-C port. This other one, the right one here with the USB-C sign, actually is one that does data transfer for the SD card access, as well as the audio interface mode stuff and connecting to your computer or smartphone or tablet. The other one is just for power delivery. However, if you have a computer that is powerful enough, you also can just connect it to this right one here and then it will power and also provide the connectivity to your computer. The cool thing about these power solutions is that they are hot swappable. So if you have something plugged in here and for example your USB-C power bank goes empty or the cord for whatever reason gets unplugged, this will actually hot swap to the internal battery without affecting the recording. So that's definitely a good backup to have. In terms of size, this device is about 15 centimeters in length. It's about 11 in width and five in height. So it is really tiny and as you can see, it fits in the palm of my hand. And that's really, really cool that they put this much tech into this small a device. And what's also cool is that with this small form factor, the weight is also really low with about 280 grams without the batteries inside, that is really, really light. And you can just package this easily into a purse or backpack and you can record your podcasts on the go. This is specifically interesting, for example, if you were to compare this to the Rodecaster Pro, which weighs about 1.98 kilograms, so about eight times as much as this little recorder right here, and both of them have four XLR ports. So that's something really notable here. Zoom offers a power adapter called the Zoom AD117. However, if you just use any USB-C power device, you can also use that for the purpose of powering this with energy. And in the package is not really much. You have the Zoom Pod Track P4, you have a quick start guide, as well as some AA batteries. And that's it. No cables, no other things, no bag or anything else. But let's cover a couple of the more specific features to this device and to podcast recording. And that's all about remote guests as well as integrating sounds from other devices. You integrate these with these switches here on channel three and four when switched to all the way to the right here, for example, into phone mode or here into USB mode. 
Something to note here is that if you use any of these integrations with phone calls or USB, then you will lose the XLR ports and you cannot use those anymore. So you either use these two and these two integrations with phone and USB, or if you, for example, only need the USB integration or only need the phone integration, you can also just use that and then you have three XLR ports still working but you cannot use four XLR microphones and a phone call and a USB thing. That's something, for example, the Rodecaster Pro has, but this device does not feature that. However, the integration of phone calls is actually something really cool because on the side of the device, you have a connectivity port here, which one can use the BTA2 adapter, which is a Bluetooth adapter that is available from Zoom. And you can also connect a TRRS cord right here into the upper port of the two. And that way you can connect your phone to this as a source, as well as a receiver of the sounds. Something to note here is that I personally would not bother with the BTA2 because that's a Bluetooth connection and I don't necessarily trust those. I would rather choose the hardwired connection with a couple of adapters with a TRRS to TRRS cable into your phone. I will have a video specifically talking about these types of integrations and how they are set up with cords showing and all of that. So please stay tuned for that. Now, the cool thing here is that when you hook up your phone with the TRRS connection here, it will send its audio to this device on channel three and you can connect it there, unmute the port, level up the gain and you have that signal there. The cool thing on the other receiving end though is that it will send out the signal without the input of the phone. This is really important because it means that if you are using this integration for a phone call, for example, the person on the other end will not hear themselves doubled up and instead will just hear everything else that's going on, like the sound effects as well as other microphones that you have active. So that's really cool with this mix minus feature. The same thing is also possible with the audio interface mode and this channel 4 when you want to use that as a audio interface port. So you can switch this over here on the USB port and then connect for example your computer here and then this device becomes an audio interface and you can send audio here and it basically records that on port 4 and it also outputs everything that is getting recorded on this device to your computer. And there you can also record those things into your favorite program or use it as a input, for example, as your microphone for Zoom or Skype. That makes it really useful for remote calls on that end. And of course, you also find a setting inside of these settings right here called mix minus USB. And that means you can specifically turn this on or off. This is important because sometimes you just want to have the sounds from the computer playing and being used in the recording and also record those things on the computer. But for example, if you want to use this integration for a phone call or a Skype integration or something, then this mix minus would make sense because then over the USB input on the computer, you would only hear the sounds that are input into this device except for the one that you send from your computer. Again, so that the person in Skype, for example, does not hear themselves doubled up. Two more things before we jump into some sound samples. This device is also compatible with iOS devices via USB-C and the correct adapters for iPhone lightning connector, or you can also connect this to your iPad, for example, iPad Pro or iPad Air with the USB-C port, and then this will actually become a USB interface or audio interface for those devices so that you can use it, for example, for a live stream on Instagram. Now let's jump into some sound samples between the F6, the H5 and the pod track with different microphones. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. 
Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Now I think sound samples like this are things that you have to judge for yourself. I usually just do some loudness normalization there and of course keep them without equalizer and stuff like that. I personally think that the Zoom P4 actually sounds really good and I was actually quite surprised by the limiters in this device that they sound this good and I did not expect that because I previously used the Zoom H5 for this type of podcast recording before upgrading to the Zoom F6 and there the limiters were completely used less because they just gave you the same clipped signal that was there in the first place. Now here on the other hand with the limiters engaged you get a really usable signal despite being completely overpowered but it at least does not completely destroy your signal and it still is very much listenable. And with that I want to jump into my highlights for this device starting with the price. This is a recorder that starts at about 200 US dollars or 220 euros as of this recording. This is really mind blowing to me how they were able to package this much and this high quality interfaces into this device for that price. That specifically compared to the Zoom H5 for example which still sells for 280 US dollars with two XLR ports and of course the inbuilt microphone. A couple more capabilities on the recording side but in in terms of sound this here blows it out of the water and this H5 is actually way older than this. So that's really really remarkable. The other thing is that you have four XLR ports. That's definitely a highlight for me because that means that you can integrate multiple people and I would say you can get at least three people hooked up and still use the USB integration or the phone call integration to have a remote guest. And if you don't need those features then you of course have all four available for a really really nice conversation with four people. My next highlight is the sound pad and being able to just integrate something like listener questions or the recording of the intro so that you can just produce your show including intro music and outro music or something like sound effects or the listener questions. Another highlight are the headphone ports and being able to individually change the volume on these because that's actually something that previously you had to usually use some kind of a splitter for multiple headphones but then all of those were powered off of one port and they all had to use the same exact volume or you buy a specific device for this type of functionality. And that's not always the best way to go because then everything becomes more clunky, bigger and of course also more expensive. Here you have that built in already. And with that said you of course also get the integration of phone calls which is really easy to set up just by plugging in the phone right there or using it over USB-C with the USB-C integration and some Skype call or similar things. Really easy to use and definitely really powerful. And on that note I think that the USB-C part is actually also very important. Of course nowadays it is more and more common that we have USB-C on all the things but integrating this with two USB-C ports for power delivery as well as data transfer is really really cool so that this way you can have a power brick for example powering the device on one USB-C port and with the other you connect it to your iPad for example for live streaming or a backup recording. So that's something that I definitely value on this device. Now I also want to mention some of the lowlights of this device that I have found in my testing. 
First up, for example, is that they are advertising a mix minus feature. However, I kind of expected that this mix minus would also be available on the headphone ports. However, it is not. It is only available for the call integration where it is always on, so the phones will never receive themselves. And the USB integration, you have a setting for the mix minus, but it never is applied to the headphone outputs. Maybe that's something weird for me to expect that this would be possible to not hear yourself on the headphone output, but I thought that that was a thing. Now with this integration it makes integrating the calls really nice and simple, it helps there and it is greatly appreciated that it is available on those two modes. Then we have the build quality and as you can see it is pretty much all a plastic build. It's not necessarily a cheap plastic, it doesn't feel like it will break on me and the buttons also don't necessarily feel like they are going to come off anytime soon. They might have a bit of wiggle room, specifically the top ones, the volume buttons are a little sturdier. However, as long as you maybe put it in a little bag before putting it into your backpack or something, you will probably be fine. This is a different story for a device like for example the Zoom F6 right here. However, this is also a device that is about three times as expensive as the Zoom P4. And I have three more points here. One, the recording is always done with all channels. This of course can also be a highlight because that way you can unmute any of these ports at any given moment and still use it without any problem of synchronization or anything like that. So that's a plus. However, it also uses more storage despite being useful in those moments where you know I'm going to use two ports and no more. So that's one part. You also don't have the ability to change that in the firmware settings. So maybe that would be interesting to add in a future update. And then we have the recording format with 44.1 kilohertz and 16 bit. It is probably enough for voice recording. However, I still would have preferred to have at least 24 bit and 48 kilohertz so that it would be on par with something like, for example, the Rodecaster Pro. I personally love the 32-bit float that I have on the F6 and maybe if you have seen other videos of me raving about that mode that it might be interesting to know that I would still use something like the PodTrack P4 if I would not have the Zoom F6 already. The 32-bit floating point audio recording is something that is really really cool if you do the post-processing. However, if you just want to finish the file right then and there inside of this recorder the 44.1 kilohertz in this recorder will definitely be enough for you and the 16-bit, as long as you don't need as much post-processing, are also giving you enough room as long as you have your things dialed in correctly. Now granted that the limiter in this device also takes care of a lot of that, you can actually pretty much dial yourself in and be ready with that file once you are done. Personally, I still love the ability that I can record in 32-bit floating point audio here with the F6 and also use that for podcasts. However, that makes the post-processing workflow that much more complicated. I will link you a video in the description below if you want to learn more about 32-bit floating point audio where I describe different scenarios where either of these might actually make more sense. Again, 16-bit is a little low for me. I would have preferred 24, but for what it does and what it is supposed to do, that is probably going to be enough for most people. And my last point on this list is that there is really not that much to customize. Again, this can be a plus point because it also means that you don't really need to know that much about audio processing and such things to use this device. For example, the limiter and the low cut filters don't need any extra setup, you just use them or you don't use them. There's just no other setting. And also you don't have other settings for the recording file format, you just have the 44.1 kilohertz and 16-bit. With other recorders, you always have to kind of read about what you want to use or what you might want to use and you really have to find out yourself what might be the best for your setup. This here takes those decisions away from you and that means for some people that will be annoying and it also means that for others this may be the best recorder that there is because they don't want those other customization features and don't need them and this way this just works for a podcast recording. Now with all of that, what's my conclusion about the PodTrack P4? 
And I would say for the target audience who are podcasters and probably the budget kind of podcaster and also the mobile podcaster who like to have a small device, this is definitely a really, really good investment. It's a perfect tool for many things. You have those four XLR ports, those headphone ports, which you don't usually get on any type of other recorder, except for maybe the Rodecaster Pro. But with this form factor, this weight, as well as the feature set with these sound pads, you just can't go better than this. It additionally also sounds really, really good. I am actually surprised overall, and you will hear more sound samples of me using this in other videos. But overall, I have to say, this is really, really cool that this is now available on the market for podcasters as podcasting is becoming increasingly popular. And this makes it really simple to integrate those phone calls, to integrate the USB port, and also have the ability to interview multiple people. Whereas for example, before I was recommending the Zoom H5, which only has two XLR inputs. And if you wanna upgrade to the Zoom H6 or now the H8, those are significantly more expensive than the PodTrack P4 by about twice as much and you still don't have features like, for example, the multiple headphone outputs or the sound pads. So with that said, I hope this video was informative for you. And if you have any questions, you can leave those in the comment section down below and I will try to answer you there or make a video specifically about it. However, I will not have this on hands for much longer because it is a rental from Sound Services GmbH who were kind enough to send this out to me so that I could make these videos about it. I will have links about this device in the description below with videos and a playlist that I made as well as the links to purchase the PodTrack P4 there. These links are mostly affiliate links which help me make more videos like this by earning a small commission which has no effect on your purchasing price. Now if you found this video helpful or entertaining please give it a thumbs up. That helps out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and hit the bell icon so that you are notified when they are released. With that said I hope you have an amazing day, make it your life, create your podcast and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.